That's why you're in it. You're not in it. I'll just lean this way. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit here. I'll just sit here like this. Um, now, we were having a conversation just prior to the break about talking to yourself. And sometimes when things happen and you, you just ask yourself the questions, why did that happen? What did I do that I, I shouldn't have done or couldn't make? I hate the word should. Shouldn't have done. I have to use it. And then I think, okay, I'm going to use the words stop it in future. <laughs> but talk, talking to yourself can create issues with how you're feeling you become more emotional depending on what the conversation's about that you're having with yourself. And, you know, when you, when you live on your own, you can have conversations, quite a few conversations about different things. And you can ask yourself questions and you can ask yourself why and all these sorts of things, but you have to stop. Well, if you feel that you're um, spiraling out of control, then, then it's probably a good idea to say, look, I think I need to stop now because it's not beneficial. However, the self-talk, you know, like I was talking about the little voice mastery, mm -hmm. you know, one of them is, ask, you know, you got to ask yourself questions. That's really ownership. Yeah. And, you know, like I was talking about responsibility and it's probably one of the most, I call it the responsibility flip chart because it was drawn up for me. But, you know, like we deny sometimes things that happen in our lives and we, we, we turn a blind eye and we deny it. So I ask myself, am I denying something right now? Is it from fear that we do that? Well, possible. There's, there's various reasons, but the whole idea is, or I'm, am I denying? Because I just don't want to deal with that situation because it's possibly hurtful or I'm not ready or whatever it is. So I got to give myself the answers. Am I denying something? No, because I don't, I personally don't deny anything anymore because I just want to get to the bottom of it. For me, it's like I need this 24 hour turnaround from my upset, but sometimes I don't manage. So I can go for two, three days still hurting about something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still function really well, but there's just something bugging me. And then I just go, okay, I can't process it through my own processes. And then I call one of my coaches. And I go and I say, I need a session because I want to be free of angst. It's nobody, nobody wants angst. You don't want to live with it. But, but people stay with it and they do nothing about it. And it goes around and around in a circle. So then the first question is, am I denying? Well, I'm not denying the fact that there's something going on. No, I'm not. Okay. Am I laying blame? So I just go, well, I've been in a situation with somebody and <laughs> they really upset me and, and I'm pointing a finger and then I just go, okay. So when you, when you do like a gun, right? And you've you got put three. your finger up, yeah. you know, there's one pointing forward, one pointing upwards, the three are pointing towards you. And, yeah. and I still remember long, long, long time ago, like 15 years ago, I had a psychologist do that to me and I couldn't understand. He goes, where do most of the fingers point? And I was so blank. In the end, he actually had to tell me because I wouldn't guess five minutes later. Mm -hmm. And since then, I'm going, yeah, I've got three. The most of the fingers point towards you. So got to look at what, what have I done? So I just sit there and I just go, I can't blame somebody else. Jeez, I wish I couldn't blame somebody else. But <laughs> I can't because I know it doesn't work that way. So, okay, back to me. All right. And then I'll start to justify, yeah, but it because, yeah, because, it, and I go, yeah, that's really working because it's not. And then I go, okay, did I have a part in this, in this situation? Am I responsible in any shape or form? And what I started to realize when I started asking myself these questions is that I realized that sometimes I either said something that I shouldn't have or I didn't say something that I should have. I did something or I didn't do something. And when I look at those four things, I go, right. So which was, which one was it? Which one was it? <laughs> right. And then I just go, right. And then I go, okay. Or I feel rejected or I feel hurt. 
And the thing is, can that person actually hurt me? Would their actions bring up something in me? But they can't, unless they punch you, nobody can say, here, I'm going to reject you now, okay? Or here, I'm abandoning you now, or I am going to hurt you. That nobody does that. Everybody's reacting, doing their own thing. So I just sit there and I just go, right, okay, so where have I allowed something? Or where have I been, where have I been rejecting myself, my values? Where did I abandon what's important to me to appease somebody else? So I do, I do this process and then I just go, right. And that, that's how I become responsible, 100% responsible for my life. But we all have to be responsible for our own lives. But a lot of the time, yeah. we blame someone else because it didn't go the way it was supposed to go, or your expectation of that. But it's e it's easy it's, to blame. But it's easy and it's normal. And it it's actually no, it is normal. It's a normal human thing to when when emotion is high, intelligence is, is low. low. Yep, and it becomes that. a practice. It really is a practice. It's not something that you can do and learn overnight. Like this. Well, we've learnt it for a long time, so we've got to relearn it in a new way. So it takes time. What do you mean? What do you mean? If you, we've we learnt what a long time ago? Learn to blame or oh, not sorry, take sorry, responsibility sorry. or do all that sort of stuff. So to change that, it takes a while because it's a part of who we've how we've grown up yeah. and the people around us and the environment and everything that surrounded us so to yeah, learn I, yeah. to change that well sometimes we actually learn um say for example like in 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 my life um i never learned how to deal with anger so when my parents used to get angry and they were raging they were really raging with their words and with their actions. So there was a lot of toxicity and abuse in there, which means that I never learned how to deal with anger. So I became it because I didn't see anything different. That's right. Right? So when I started to be really, really angry in my marriage, my relationship, this, that, and the other, I thought, I'm not a bad person, but I'm not behaving very well. Yeah. So I was still extremely aware of that somewhere in there. And I started to seek. I thought, I, I need to find out what's wrong with me. Well, what I discovered, there's nothing wrong with me. And there's nothing wrong with anyone out there. Everybody's perfect as they are where they are at. But there is always room for improvement. There's always room like, why do we do our nails? It's improvement. Why do we wax our legs? Why do we do our hair? Why do we this? So we can feel good. But that's all an improvement. That's right. right? But it's why do we renovate our houses? It's improvement, home improvement. So why don't people spend time and investing in themselves to improve the quality of their life? So if, you, if somebody is always upset and angry and that, it comes a point, if the pain is really deep, just go do something about it. And I've had, I've had people say to me before, but what if I find out there's something wrong with me? I say, you're never gonna find that. There's nothing wrong with you, you know? So, I mean, there, look, there are people that are ill, that, that's a little bit different, but they don't have the awareness to say, what if I find out? Because they they're not they're not going to find out. Because they don't want to. They're no, not. no, no, no. They they ill. They are you know like there's mental health and oh, yes. there's mental health, yes. right? Yes. And there's there's space for all sorts of professionals for that. You know, you got your psychologist, psychiatrist, different therapists, and then you've got the other end. This is like the in a medical field. You've got your GP, and then you've got your holistic naturopath. Yeah. And I think in the in the world of mindset and all of that, you've got your they they just train differently. So you've got there's room for everybody in this world. Absolutely. So you've got the, totally the, the therapist and so forth. But then on the other hand, you've got your 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 uh, emotional healers. You've got your coaches. You've got those type of um, 
professionals. And one group, this is how I, you know, I've done a bit of research, the, they deal with the past and they help you that way. And then you've got those that deal with the future. So I'm a coach, you know, I call myself the relationships architect because I help, I help people build great relationships with themselves and others, whether it's partners, uh, parents, siblings, workmates, whatnot, right? So, but we're looking at, like I look at, what do you want going forward, okay? Because what you've had so far is not working. It was not helping you achieve what you want. Okay, let's look at what are your goals in the future and let's start working on them now. And I guide them, right? And I ask lots of questions and so forth. Whereas I have experienced psychotherapy, um, normal therapy, counseling, relationship counseling, I've done inner child psychotherapy, I've done, I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I worked with that and it helped up to a point. And then I thought, okay, you need this, something else. This is not working anymore. I still remember one of the first uh, professionals I saw with this gorgeous Hungarian um, psychotherapist in Bulim. And and I kept going there and just verbal diarrhea, blah, 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 blah. And then once I said everything I had to say five times over, I used to stress going there because I said, I have nothing else to say. I yeah. felt like everything came yes, out, yeah. right? And I said to her, I said, why don't you say anything? And she goes, because I don't. I said, but what kind of therapist are you? <laughs> and she goes, the one that listens. I said, but I want someone to tell me what to do, like, like to ask me some questions. She said, that's a very different type of therapy. I'm, people need, people that need to verbalize. Need, verbalize. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, then I think I don't want to come back anymore. <laughs> and she goes, I understand. I said, however, do you know how to do that other time? She goes, yes. I said, can I have one session with you where you ask me questions or explain something to me? She said, yes, I can. Can I bring my sister? She goes, yes, you can. So we went in and we had a, con we had a conversation with her. And then she explained to us about the anger. She said, all you've seen is rage all your life. You never learned as a child how to deal with your own emotions, those heightened emotions, because what you saw was violence and you have a battle within yourself because you don't want to be violent but it's blowing and that was one of the best thing that ever happened you know because that started the trajectory of, of more uh, becoming very inquisitive about what else what else what else mm -hmm. curiosity well um, understanding i wanted to understand why i do what i do so yeah and creating that awareness too. I mean, we need to be aware of what's going on so that we can approach it and find the right people to work with. Because you've got to delve into the root cause to get through to where you need to be to improve, as you say, improve. Yeah. And it's all about the willingness to go there, to go to that space and come out of that and realize that you're not a bad person. You really are, you have a magic and brilliance. And everybody, as you say, everybody has, I always say everybody has a magic and a brilliance and they have superpowers. They've just got to find them. Yeah, and it's, a lot of people are actually aware of them, but they're too afraid to show up and they play small. Whereas when you're born, why do babies, when they're born and they cry, express themselves? They loud. They don't sit there going, "Oh, maybe I should cry a little bit quieter to not <laughs> bother somebody else." Right? They just say, "Hey, I'm here. Hello, hello. Come and talk to me. Come yep. and pay attention." I need to attention. Me. I, I need, need something. You know. Yeah. So you're born with a massive spirit, and then somewhere along the way, it gets it, suppressed. It gets diminished. So like. So in, in a world that I've studied in, you know, there's a thing called, you know, 
uh, life particles. So we're mm. born with like billions of life particles, right? Because everything is energy. Mm -hmm. And as the years go by, we give away some of our particles to people, like people we love. We give part of ourselves to them. And then some people take it from us, you know? I didn't. Without even asking. They don't, that's yeah. right. But this is all um, very intangible because you can't see any of this. It just happens. Mm. You know? Anyway, and one of the things that I learned is to ask for them back. And I thought it was a serious mumbo jumbo. I go, what do you mean ask back for the life party? Because like they all going to come back. And they go, yeah. She goes, do the movement and just say. And I remember the first time I did this, I felt so silly. You know, I burned some sage. I'm like, yeah, okay, burn some sage. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, you know? And then I just go, okay, so how do I ask this? Oh, this is really crazy. I actually got broken into. My house got broken into. And that was the very first time I actually did it. So I went around with the sage around the house and I thought, this is really crazy, but let me try it. And I said, all right, you came into my home and you brought your negative energy. Whatever you needed from my house, clearly you're in a situation. And I hope that that you just, it's not drugs. I hope that you needed money for food or whatever and whatever you took from me. I said, but please now take all your energy particles because I don't want them in my home. And I said, and I want you to give back all the energy particles that were connected to the things that you took from me. Now this, and for the listeners, this must sound really weird out there. She's not weird. Right. <laughs> but some people might go, yeah, right. But look, I'm just sharing an experience that I have. So, and I remember doing it and the more I was doing it, so I went into every single room and I did this in every single room. And the more I was doing it, the more empowered I was feeling. And by the time I was done, and literally I went for about 20 minutes, I was doing this. And I thought I was in some kind of voodoo forest doing <laughs> some voodoo. But I started to really believe it. And I started to say, actually, all those pieces, like my mom's watch, because my mom died when I was five. And the only thing that I had of hers was her watch. So they took that. They took my dad's watch. He's passed away too. They took away, I had, every time I traveled with, I used to work for a, a, a company called Intimo Lingerie. Mm -hmm. And they um, they had these rewards trips. So every reward trip I, I went on, and I went on about 10, I bought myself a ring from the places that we went to just as a memento. And I'm, I'm very careful with my jewelry. And they took all of them. So every piece that I had, had a memory and an emotion attached to it. So I thought, to, I thought, well, okay, you took the pieces, but I want my memories back. So give back my love, give it all back to me. So, and it worked because I felt relieved and I just went, look, there's nothing I can do about this now. I can be upset about it for the rest of my life. It's gone. Yep. Lucky I have photos of my mom's watch. Lucky I had it when I got married, both, all three of us, my brother, my sister and I, we all carried her with us when we got married. And it's fine. It's okay. It's it's a thing. But the memories, you can't take those away no, from me. No, you can't. Right. Now we're going for a break. Yep. Okay. And we'll be back after the news. Okay.